Welcome to Unbreakable Latina. Hi guys, welcome back to Unbreakable Latina. This is your host Melina. I hope you're having a great day, whatever day you're listening to this on. I am recording at 8 in the morning because lately it's been really, really hot and you know, my studio gets hot and by my studio, I mean my room. Um, I can't turn on the air conditioning because it's too noisy when I'm recording, like you hear it in the background. So basically the last, maybe not the last episode, but the previous ones I had been recording and like just sweating in the sauna because I was dying. I felt like I was going to (laughs) faint. Okay, I'm being dramatic. But it was really, really hot and I'm like, okay, now I'm going to record in the mornings because it's just better that way. It's cooler. But the challenge is that my voice, um, I don't really warm up. So I wake up and like I get my coffee and, you know, brush my teeth, wash my face, do all that. But my voice keeps going like se va. It just goes away and I'm just like talking and I'm like, "Eh, eh, eh, eh." so bear with me and my angelic voice because (laughs) it goes on and off and I keep on stopping the recording and like re-recording. Anyways, um, this week's sort of been like a blur and I've just been very overwhelmed and I know I've talked about in the last few podcasts, you guys are probably like, parece disco rayado, she's always burnt out, she's always this... Well, let me tell you, this week was, it took the cake for all the other weeks. Usually, throughout the week, I write on my notes on my phone, like, things I want to talk about, things that happen throughout my days. This week, nada. And I was like, what the heck am I going to talk about? So I had to sit here before I recorded, and I was like, what happened this week? And I was just, like, digging in my head, and I came up with a couple things that I want to talk about. But if you follow me on social media, on Instagram, on TikTok, I haven't really been posting as much as I usually do. Like, I love engaging with you guys. I love updating you guys and just, like, making videos and just being me. And this week, I felt like I wasn't myself. I am, like, just everything is just overwhelming. And I had so many things to do que no podía hacer ni una cosa. Like, I couldn't do not even one thing. And I just had to recognize that I was feeling burnt out. So I think I've been feeling this way because, first of all, the world is falling apart. I don't really keep up with the news, but, you know, you see it on social media and, like, people talk about it at work or in life. Or my mom reminds me que en las noticias pasó esto. And it's just the world is is a scary place right now. And I try a lot to stay positive. I'm all about, like you know, trying to see the best in things, but sometimes this is just, like, a lot. And I think this week's been like that for me. Work is crazy because everybody, unfortunately, keeps coming down with COVID and, you know, changes every day and you have to do your job and then still do other people's jobs and it's just a lot. Also, like, now with the podcast, all the hard work I've done is paying off. So, I'm getting noticed by brands and I'm not complaining. This is not me complaining. I'm really proud of where I'm at. But there's also a lot to learn with negotiating with partnerships and all that. I don't know anything about that. I never even imagined this was going to happen so fast. But that's a lot to learn. And I had to get some pep talks with my friend Angela, my friend Amanda, and my sister and my mom. And they were like, you need to relax. And I know I talk to you guys all about like, take a break and do this, but I am the worst when it comes to giving advice to myself and listening to my own advice. Like, I want to do it all, pero también I'm only one person. And I can't do it all if I'm not mentally right, physically right. Like, I need to slow the fuck down. (laughs) And it's just been so many things on my plate. But because I've been feeling so burnt out, like every day I was getting home from work and I would sit on my couch 
and I would fall asleep or any little time like I would just sit down me dormia like cold out and then also like I've heard of COVID fatigue and me and my esthetician Rose were talking about it the other day she's like dude I feel so tired and I'm like me too like something I've never felt before like sure I'm tired here and there but like I would fall asleep at the couch and then I'd wake up and then come to bed and then my sleep would just go away and then I'm like I'm awake till like one in the morning and I don't even know why so I just, I've, I've been out of it. Your girls have been out of it. So if you notice that I've, like, I haven't been posting, it's because of that reason. Like, I was just like, I need to take a slight break. Like, I wasn't fully not on social media. Like, I was still sending my friend memes, but I wasn't really engaging with you guys, and that's the reason why. But I can say the only thing that kept me sane this week was going on my walks. And I was going on my walks, like, at less, I think it was, like, almost, like, 7.30 or 8.00. So I was walking like for 40 minutes and then it was almost nine and the sky was like getting like dark, but the light's been out for longer and I love it. But at the same time, it like trips me out because I'm like, oh my God, it's already nine. But the walks kept me sane. So if you're feeling some sort of way like that, go on a walk. It, it's life changing. Um, I love my walks. The skies were beautiful this week. So that helped me a lot. So on Wednesday, was it Wednesday? Tuesday or Wednesday, I had my facial, my microneedling session. So I have a lot of scarring from my acne. I didn't have acne until I was 23. I'm a little self-conscious about my acne scars because people have been really mean. And in the past, like, I don't care anymore. But when I was younger, like, it was something I was very self-conscious about. Like, people were mean about it. Some random people would come up to me and like, what's, like, oh, why don't you use, like, proactive? And I was talking to my esthetician, Rose, and she was telling me how one of her clients also had acne scars and said that, she's like, I never knew how much, like, skin can affect your, like, self-esteem until I started talking to my clients and just little things that people say and I'm like yeah it's like a huge thing and I've always struggled with that like I, for a while I had really really bad like cystic acne and I would like to hide I didn't I would put a bunch of makeup which probably made it worse um till like probably a few years ago I was okay going out I think when I started actually taking care of my face and going to an esthetician and like trying to figure out what was wrong because it wasn't like my diet because I was eating clean um so I think for me it's hormonal and I've been battling with this for so long I should make an episode about that because the doctors like screwed me up because they put me on birth control and it got calm for a while but then I was like why am I using birth control to control my acne like that doesn't make sense so I'm gonna have to use it for the rest of my life and just putting like medication like that in my body I'm not okay with that so it's just been it's been a journey and I think that what helped me the most is finding the right esthetician the right products so I'm on the journey to have a better skin and it's it's been a rough ride. My sister and I have both been struggling with that. She started also when she was about 22, 23. So I don't know what happens. Maybe her hormones get out of whack at that time. But I would love to have Rose on the podcast. I, I want to have her because she has a lot of tips on how to clear your face. I've also been using, this is not a plug, but I've been using Alani, like these pills. I for Alani Balance, I believe that's what it is. And it, it helps, like, women with PCOS, I've heard. I'm not a medical professional, but I think that's been helping a lot because my face been clearing, like, immensely. But we're talking... Where was I going with this? We were talking about how skin really affects your self-esteem, and I was telling her, yeah, like, it affected my self-esteem for so long. Like, I would never want to go out the house without makeup. Now I don't care. I'm like, whatever. This is... Si no me quieres at my belleza with my makeup all done up and hiding all my acne, you don't deserve me at my acne skin. But um, we were talking about that and she's like, oh, wow, like, I never knew until this one of my clients was telling me, like, his confidence has gotten up. And you guys, if you guys have scarring and you haven't done microneedling, like, I just did one session and my skin looks so good. Like, the other day I was like, oh my god, like, my makeup went on so smooth and 
I have three more sessions to go, so I'm really excited. Uh, I've been documenting, like, the journey, so I'll put my results, and it's just, like, life-changing. Like, I'm glad that I finally got out of my comfort zone and went to esthetician, because that's the scary part, like, going in, and I, I've tried a few, and some just were, like, mean, and they make you feel shitty about what you were doing with your skin, but Rose and I had another esthetician before that also was like, oh no, it's okay, like, we're here to help, we're not here to make you feel bad, and when you find the, find the right person, like, the person, <laughs> when you find the right person to take care of your skin and to help you and guide you, life-changing. So, if you're suffering with acne, you're not alone, girl, or boy. <laughs> um, so, I, I went to the microneedling session. After, you get numb. So, your face gets fully numb, and they do the microneedling. I honestly don't even know what it was, but because I couldn't feel anything. But, like, sentia como, like, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, like, a scaredy cat when it comes to needles and stuff. So, I was just laying there, like, chilling, talking to Rose, and... My face was numb, so it felt like I got my face done when I came out. But after, I was like, I'm going to go, like, get a juice to Nectar. Because I'm a regular at Nectar when I don't make my own juice at home. Because lately, I haven't really been doing that. So I just go get a juice at Nectar. And I walk in, looking like a tomate. And tell me why. Of all the days, like, there is never any cute guys there. But that day, when I'm looking like a tomate... <laughs> All the hot guys were there, and I was like, what the hell? Like, do hot guys go to Nectar at 8 p.m.? Because if they do, I'm going to start going there looking cute because I was like, oh, my God, this is terrible. Like, siempre llego aquí y nadie, ni una pinche mosca, y ahora vengo, and all these hotties are here. And then they're like, what's wrong with her face? She looks like a tomato. Or maybe they're into tomatoes. I don't know. So Thursday, I went to my first Pilates class. And it's an intro to Pilates class. So you all pensando like, oh yeah, they're going to kill me today. Because I haven't worked out. And I heard Pilates is hard. So I went. Everybody was really nice. I love the studio. Um, but it was an intro class. So basically, they just show you how to put your little reformer bed or whatever it's called your measurements but it was funny because it was like five of us that were newbies and they're like okay so who's the tallest one here yo buscando like i was looking all around the room and everybody's and i look around and everyone's staring at me and i'm like i'm the tallest <laughs> and they're like yeah you're tall and i'm like oh i didn't know so yeah i i'm not lying when i say that i'm tall for most girls and i know five seven is not a lot five eight with heels porque i don't wear big ass heels but all the girls were like five five two and i'm just like shit i am tall so they put me like on the biggest bed and it was funny because some girls like they were so short that the measurements still weren't short enough for them so they taught us a couple like moves and how to breathe and stuff that shit is hard so i was having a challenge when they make you put like your feet in the ropes like i think well my mom said that my grandma used to say it i had crooked feet so <laughs> my legs were like it was hard to keep them up and the ladies like straighten your legs and i was straightening them and then they would just fold again it was so funny but i signed up I didn't want to sign up for the membership because I don't know if it's going to be for me because, first of all, I wanted to check out, like, the scheduling. There's only, like, 12 beds, so I wanted to make sure that the availability, there would be classes for me. Like, I don't want to pay a membership y luego que vaya y no haya clases because you have to sign up for each class, so it's, like, you have to sign up week by week, and... The best thing that they had for me was buy four classes, get one free. So the classes are each 25 bucks. And if you think about it, you're like, whoa, that's a lot of money. But then if you think about like a time when you go out and have a drink or two, and I like fancy cocktails. So usually when I go to drink, I drink fancy cocktails. So they're like $12 each. So I was just thinking about it. Like if I go out, I spend about in two drinks like $25 so it's not the big it's not a big deal like don't be a coda do it for yourself what if I really like it and what if I get ripped so I have great news for you guys I finally found the perfect shirt for the first Unbreakable Latina March and I had this vision of an oversized shirt so I went to a few places I didn't like any of the shirts they had to offer 
And I was like, no, I'm not going to make these shirts if the quality is not what I would want it to be. So I finally found the right shirt. Hopefully everything works out with the printing. I have to talk to the guys that I've been talking to and see if these shirts are acceptable. But anyways, I bought the shirts. There's going to be a limited amount. So when I when they drop, make sure you get yours. I am so excited for that because that was weighing heavy on me. Like I was like, I have the designs for the shirts. I just haven't found the right shirt and it's i rather something take longer and it be quality than just hacerlo a lo pendejo and just like make something shitty just to make it like that's not me i I rather take my time and have something nice than just to be pressured into like getting a shirt out so keep an eye out i i will announce when I dropped the shirts. I, I have the shirts physically. I just have to get them printed now. The design is done. I'm excited. And I can't wait to see you guys wearing the merch. I already told you guys what the episode's going to be about. So it is about being burnt out. So what is burnout? Burnout is a state of emotional, physical, and mental exhaustion caused by excessive and prolonged stress. It occurs when you feel overwhelmed, emotionally drained, and unable to meet constant demands. As the stress continues, you begin to lose interest and motivation that led you to take on a certain role in the first place. Burnout reduces productivity and saps your energy, leaving you feeling increasingly helpless, hopeless, cynical, and resentful. Eventually, you may feel like you have nothing more to give. This is exactly how I have been feeling. So if you've been feeling any of this, you're probably burnt out. So there are physical, emotional, and behavioral signs of burnout. Some physical signs are like you're always tired and drained. Um, you're not sleeping well or you're sleeping too much. You have a change in appetite. So you're either eating too much or not eating at all. Your body hurts. You have frequent headaches and that's a huge sign for me because I get these really bad migraines to the point where like the light bothers me so that was another sign of burnout. Some emotional signs are sense of failure and self-doubt, feeling helpless, trapped, defeated, detachment, feeling alone in the world, loss of motivation, increasingly negative, um, cynical, or you don't get satisfied by your accomplishments. You're like, I could do better. And then there's behavioral signs. So you withdraw from all your responsibilities. You isolate yourself. You procrastinate. So you, all the things that you have to do are taking longer. You start um, taking out your frustration on others or skipping work, leaving early, um, coming in late, not basically not giving a fuck. So although burnout and stress seem almost the same, they're not. Because with stress, it's just like, oh, I'm stressed out about all these things I have to do. With burnout, it's like you have all these things to do, but you have no energy and you don't want to do it. So you know when stress is happening because you feel it and you know what it's like. It's familiar. But with burnout, it's a little harder to pinpoint because you, I mean, for me, I didn't know I was feeling this way until I started talking to people and like, especially Angela, my homegirl Angela, I talked to her the other day and she's like, yeah, those are signs of burnout. I used to feel that way and I was like, ooh. So causes of burnout can be from stemming from your job. So if you're feeling overworked, underpaid, undervalued, then that's a sign of burnout. Burnout can also be caused if you're like a parent that stays home with the kids and your spouse or whatever goes to work but you're trying to keep up with like the kids homework or your housework so it could be not only from your job it could be from your life so some work-related causes of burnout can be feeling like you have little or no control over your work lack of recognition or reward for good work unclear or overly demanding job expectations doing work that's unchallenging working in a chaotic or high pressure environment yes 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 so a lot of my burnout came from work lifestyle causes of burnout can be working too much without time for socializing or relaxing not getting enough sleep taking on too many responsibilities without the help from others lack of close or supportive relationships 
Even personality traits can cause you to burn out. For example, being a perfectionist, nothing is ever good enough, being um, high achieving, type A personality, the need to be in control um, and you don't want to delegate tasks to others. There is a lot of causes to burn out. And I didn't recognize that I was burnt out until my friend Angela pointed it out. And I have been just thinking about it because stress is one thing. Because I, I always am stressed out about everything. <laughs> but it's just who I am. But with stress, it's like, oh, I have all this stuff to do. Like, I just have to do it one at a time. And you pep talk yourself to do it one at a time and take some time. But with burnout, I had never felt like not wanting to do not one thing. Like having so many things to do, but not wanting to do one thing and it's hard for me to like talk about it because I've always been so positive with you guys about you know taking time for yourself and doing thing one thing at a time and you're only one person I'm so super positive and stuff but when I was feeling super negative I'm like geez like this isn't like me like why am I feeling like this like I started feeling a sense of imposter syndrome I'm like am I even good enough to do this podcast like do I have what it takes am I gonna run out of stiff stuff to do like just feeling really negative and my whole podcast has been about being transparent for you guys so I'm telling you guys that I had a rough week and it's okay if you've had these weeks too. I'm not always a positive person. I try to be, but sometimes the negative, just negative Nancy just came out to play this week. So how to deal with this burnout? So the first step is to recognize. So watch for signs of burnout and recognize that you're going through it and learn how to take a break. You can turn to other people. For me, that was huge. So I always talk about that I'm very open with my friends, with my colleagues of what I'm going through. And when you open up, you start realizing that you're not the only one feeling this way. Like I told a coworker, like I feel this way. And she's like, I feel the same way. And I'm like, okay, I'm not alone. I'm not going crazy talking about it, um, making time to just have a conversation with a friend. Like I told you guys, if you follow me on social media, Angela and I started scheduling FaceTimes on Tuesdays at 5.30. And that helps a lot because we both feed off of each other and we talk about how we're currently feeling our single life. Just talking about, hey, I felt this way. Oh my God, I felt this way. And just having a sense of trauma bonding <laughs> just helps a lot. Like sharing with others, opening up, talking about it, distracting yourself by going on a walk or making that plan to meet your friend for a coffee or a juice or a drink, whatever. And if your job is the cause of your burnout, try to change like the narrative in your head of what your job is doing to you. Sometimes there's no light at the end of the tunnel and your job is just draining you and then therefore I suggest that you find a new one. But if you don't want to find a new job and you do love some aspects of your job, make sure you remember those. Like I love socializing with my coworkers. That's my favorite thing to do. Um, if it wasn't for my coworkers, my job would be boring. Um, changing your attitude towards your job can help you regain a sense of purpose and control. So find a purpose. Say, hey, I'm doing this service or selling this product or doing this for a better, like to help somebody or my job is important. You have to just pep talk yourself out of it. And if you're feeling burnt out, take that mental health day off. Take a sick day. Sick days are also mental health days. Take a vacation if you can. There's so many people that just are like, oh, I have all this sick time. I have all this vacation time, but I have nowhere to go. You don't have to go anywhere to take that time off. And sometimes you just need a reset. So take that PTO. It's there for a reason. You also have to reevaluate your priorities. Don't forget to set boundaries. It's okay to say no. Don't overextend yourself. Saying no is hard. I've talked about it many times, but sometimes you have to because you don't have the energy. You have to do stuff for yourself. Um, take a break from technology. Like I told you guys before, I have made an effort to be more present and I took a sort of break for the last couple days and it helped a lot. Make an effort to set aside some relaxation time. So meditate or just read or sit outside. Being outside helps so much. Um, make sure you're trying to get plenty of sleep because sometimes with lack of sleep, you're already burnt out and you're making it so much worse by not sleeping. Combat burnout by taking time to exercise. And I don't mean like go lift like heavy. I mean, you can if you want to, but even like 10 minutes of a walk will make 
a difference. I always get my mood is boosted by a walk. Um, make sure you're eating healthy stuff. Sometimes when I eat shitty, I also feel crappy. Like it makes me feel worse. A few positive affirmations for when you're feeling burned out are you don't have to justify taking breaks. This is something that I struggle with because I'm like, tengo tantas cosas que hacer. I have so much to do and I shouldn't be taking a break right now. The guilt of feeling like you shouldn't take a break is real. Um, you deserve a chance to rest. It's okay to acknowledge that you have a lot on your plate. So be like, yeah, I do have a lot on my plate. I'll take it one step at a time. Remember that nobody can operate at 100% 100% of the time. Everybody has a breaking point and everybody has to slow down at some point. Your need for a break does not equate to incapability. So just because you need a break doesn't mean you can't handle your scandal. Like, it's okay to take a break doesn't mean shit. Um, you don't have to hold yourself to a standard of perfection. You're not a perfect person. No one's perfect. Everybody just shows us what they want to show us on social media. Not everybody wakes up and does affirmations in the morning and meditation. Like, I wake up and I'm like, shit, I forgot to do this. And I'm running around like a crazy chicken with my head cut off. You know that taking care of yourself should be a priority because if, si tú no estás bien, if you're not okay, then you're not able to do anything else. So that's all I have for you guys this week. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you're feeling burnt out, I'm sending a hug. Don't let it take over you like I let it take over me. I'm feeling a lot more positive and I'm feeling better. I'm feeling rested and let's take on this week. Please don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. Your reviews mean the world to me. It helps me um, come up on people's suggested. And I love that. I love when people tell me like, hey, I found you on Apple Podcasts because Apple Podcasts like suggested it to me or Spotify. And it's all thanks to your guys' reviews that my podcast is being seen. On Spotify, it only allows you to give a star rating, but on Apple Podcasts, it allows you to give you a star rating and a review. So if you listen on Apple Podcasts, I would really appreciate if you leave a review. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Unbreakable Latina, on Twitter at Latina Podcaster. F subscribe on YouTube to my channel. You can get your Unbreakable Latina sticker at www.unbreakablelatina.com. And you can also go under the Contact Me um, tab. You can send me a request for a topic that you want me to talk about or advice that you need and I could feature it on the podcast. And if you want to be anonymous, you could be anonymous. If you want to tell me where you're from and where, what's your name and you want me to share it on the podcast, just make sure you write that down. I hope you guys have an amazing week and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye! Thank you.